In this video, we're going to have a quick tour of some of the key features of the LoadBalancer.org appliance. The web user interface is accessed by going to the IP address of the appliance on port 9080. By default, the web UI can be accessed on any IP address that's associated to the appliance. We can also connect using HTTPS by using port 9443. Access to the web UI is secured with a password. You can also configure the web UI to authenticate against an external LDAP, RADIUS, or Microsoft Active Directory server. This gives you additional options regarding security. After we've successfully authenticated, we're presented with the system overview page. This gives us an idea of what's currently going on with the appliance. We can see that we currently have two virtual services defined, one titled SQL cluster and the other titled web cluster. We can see information about these virtual services such as the IP addresses they're listening on, the ports they're listening on, the number of active connections to them, and the load balancing methods and modes they're using. We can see that we currently have two different load balancing methods in use, layer 4 and layer 7. The SQL cluster VIP is using layer 4 DR mode. DR stands for direct return, sometimes also referred to as DSR or direct server return. The web cluster VIP is using layer 7 in HTTP mode, which acts as a reverse proxy. The appliance is designed to be as flexible as possible and supports multiple different load balancing modes and methods. Towards the bottom of the system overview page is a series of graphs. These graphs show the appliance's network bandwidth views, system load averages and memory usage over time. They give you some insight into how well the appliance is running and they're useful for providing a quick snapshot that highlights recent traffic spikes or issues. Let's test the web service that we're load balancing. We can do that by pointing our browser at the IP address for the web cluster virtual service. We call this address the virtual IP address, or VIP for short. We can see that our load balanced web page loads perfectly. The primary function of a load balancer is to provide high availability, so we recommend deploying load balancers as master and slave pairs. When configured as a clustered pair, the load balancers work in active-passive mode. The active unit, normally the master appliance, handles all traffic under normal circumstances. If the active unit fails, the passive unit, normally the slave appliance, becomes active and handles all traffic. Let's log into the slave appliance. Looking at the same system overview page on the slave appliance, we can see that we don't have our virtual services listed. Instead, we're presented with a green bubble explaining that this device is currently passive. After clicking advanced to open the bubble, we can see that we have a takeover button. I'm going to press that now and fail over to the slave appliance. The process is nice and quick, and we can see that we've successfully failed over to our slave appliance. Our client connections are still coming through, and both of our services have turned green. Going back to the master appliance, we can see that it will go to a passive state after refreshing the page. After clicking advanced once again, we can take over and force a failover back to the master appliance. Again, this is a very quick process and our connections are continuing to come through. From the system overview page, you can carry out maintenance tasks. This makes performing real world maintenance on the backend servers much easier. Clicking on a virtual service expands it to show the associated real servers along with the maintenance mode buttons. A backend real server can be taken offline immediately using the halt option or can be gracefully taken offline using the Drain option. The Halt option immediately stops the server and prevents the load balancer from sending any further traffic there. The Drain option puts the server into a drain state, allowing established connections to continue while preventing new connections from starting unless persistence is in use. Once a real server has been halted or drained of all connections, it's safe to go ahead and carry out disruptive maintenance tasks on the server. 
Performing maintenance in this way has no impact on the overall service and causes zero downtime. Let's put a server into the drain state now to see what happens on the system overview screen. We can see that the SQL cluster VIP has turned yellow, informing us that there is something abnormal with it which requires our attention. As we have the VIP expanded to show the real servers, we can see that one of the servers is blue. This tells us that the server has been taken offline and put into a maintenance state. Let's bring that server back online. The server has come back up and turned green, and connections have started going there again. If a real server turns red, that indicates that the server is offline. The load balancer actively performs health checks against each real server that's defined. If a server starts failing health checks, it will be marked as offline, and connections will no longer be sent there. The loadbalancer.org appliance has a large range of health checks built in, from generic health checks, such as connect to port, to more application-specific health checks, such as a DICOM health check for use in medical imaging environments. It's also possible to write your own health check scripts if you need something totally bespoke. All health checks are configurable to help function in a variety of different environments and to ensure zero downtime for load balanced services. Different modes of operation are available on the appliance. We've already mentioned the layer 4 and layer 7 load balancing methods. Layer 4 load balancing has different modes such as direct return, an extremely fast mode that allows return traffic to bypass the load balancer. Also available is NAP mode, which is typical for load balancers operating at layer 4. We also support other modes, which are TUN mode and SNAP mode. Layer 7 load balancing has TCP mode and HTTP mode. Load balancing can be application aware when we use HTTP mode, or alternatively, we can work at the TCP level to load balance traffic where needed. Having many different modes to choose from provides the flexibility to add load balances to your existing architecture without having to implement any major changes. Our appliance supports every load balancing mode you can think of. A range of other features are also accessible from the web UI. From the cluster configuration menu, we have the SSL termination page. If we need to perform TLS SSL offloading on the load balancer, which allows us to decrypt HTTPS traffic, we can configure that here. This allows us to read the traffic as plain text and perform functions on it, such as adding in cookies or modifying HTTP headers. We also have an option to re-encrypt the backend allowing us to re-encrypt traffic, leaving the back end of the load balancer on its way to the real servers. We have an SSL certificates page where we can generate, import, and maintain our SSL certificates on the appliance. Unlike other vendors, TLS SSL throughput is unlimited. We also have a page for setting the heartbeat configuration, a page for configuring WAF gateways, which offer web application firewall features, double login security features and caching features, and a page for GSLB configuration, where we can set up a DNS-based load balance subdomain to use in conjunction with our layer four and layer seven load balancing. Unlike other vendors, both WAF and GSLB functionality is included in your license at no extra charge. The web UI has a maintenance menu. From here, we can access pages to perform maintenance tasks. We have pages for backup and restore, restart services, system control, software update, and others. We have a view configuration menu where we can view the underlying configuration files for the processes running on the appliance. We have a reports menu where we can view various reports and see the current status of virtual services. Finally, we have a logs menu where we can view the log files for all of the major processes running on the appliance. On our website, we have an easy to use free trial available, which supports a range of different hypervisors. We invite you to spend 20 minutes testing our software and support to see if our product meets your needs. You won't regret it. We also offer a free consultancy service. 
We want to work with you to find a great solution for any environment or scenario you have. Our interest is to provide a rock solid and secure solution that works for you. To recap what we've looked at in this video, we looked at how to securely log into the system overview page and the information that's displayed there. We looked at high availability and failing over between master and slave appliances. We looked at maintenance modes for backend servers to simplify real world server maintenance. We looked at the different load balancing methods and modes available. And we looked at some of the other features that are available from the web UI. That's the end of this overview video. Please do reach out to us with your questions. We're always happy to have a conversation.